Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting quick VFX tutorial where I will show you some cool visual effects and filmmaking tips and tricks without boring you for a full 30 minutes. Today we are going to look at proxies in Adobe After Effects. What they are, what they do and how you can use them to make your workflow in Adobe After Effects a whole lot faster. Now, you may have noticed that Adobe After Effects is not the fastest program to work in. Especially if you're working with very large video files or image sequences, once you duplicate a few layers and apply a few effects, things can slow down to a crawl rather quickly. One of the nifty little features that After Effects includes to alleviate these problems are proxies. Now, a proxy... Uh, a proxy is simply a placeholder that stands in place for a very large source file. Now, since the proxy is generally a lot smaller than the file it represents, the workflow in After Effects is sped up simply because the program has less processing to do. Once you have finished setting up your composition and all of your visual effects, you can simply disable the proxy, After Effects will revert to using the original very large video file or image sequence and you can perform your final export. Sounds pretty easy, right? That's because it is and therefore this is going to be a pretty basic tutorial. However, I will assume that you have watched my full 8-part beginner tutorial series before jumping into this one. But now, before talking your ears off, let's jump right into the tutorial. Here we are in Adobe After Effects and I already have a small composition set up. In this composition, I have a small clip that I filmed with my GoPro camera out of an airplane window just as I was leaving for a holiday. The file itself, if I go to the project window, is actually 2.1 gigabytes in size, which is fairly significant. And as I scrub through the composition, now it's not too bad, but you can definitely see the lag. If I enable some artistic color grading effects and highlights that I've added into the shot and then scrub through the composition, it definitely takes quite a bit longer to render every single frame. The fact that the file is 2.1 GB in size, even though it is actually just 1080p video, it's not even 4K, doesn't really help the situation much. Fortunately, it is pretty easy to replace this huge video file with a comparatively small proxy file to stand in its place. This will then free up some of Adobe After Effects processing time and simply make working with the file a little bit quicker. In order to create a proxy, simply right click on the file in your project panel and then go to create proxy. Now you can either create a still image to stand in place for the file that you're replacing or, well in this case it makes more sense to create a small movie to be the proxy. Let's click on movie and you will notice that After Effects automatically adds the rendering out of the proxy into the render queue. The render settings are currently set to draft, let's open this one up. And the footage is 1080p, it is going to be rendered out at half resolution which is 960 by 540 now actually I think I'm going to lower that down to a third because I don't mind if this proxy is quite small because the main work I want to do is just some color grading on it and I don't need to see all of the detail and hit OK. Next let's click on the output module. It is currently set to AVI. Let's change the format over to QuickTime and in the format options I actually like to lower this down to about 80% for my proxies. Hit OK. Also, because I'm just going to do some color grading and I plan to do the final export from Premiere Pro, I don't need to render audio for my proxy, so let's disable the audio output. Hit OK. Finally, let's select where we want to render out the file to. Personally, I always like to create a separate proxies folder that will contain all of my proxies. Let's hit save and let's render out the proxy. Bam! And After Effects has rendered out your proxy. If you go back to the project panel, you can now see a small gray square on the left side of the footage item that we created a proxy for. This indicates that this item is currently being represented by a proxy and on the size you can see it's 378 megabytes, which, well, is still big, but it's less than 2.1 gigabytes. In order to disable the proxy, this is actually a checkbox, so you can just uncheck that and After Effects will revert back to the original full file, which is 2.1 gigabytes. But for now, let's enable this because we want to work with the proxy for now. Let's return to my composition and let's scrub through it. Now, it's still not 100% smooth, but that is also because the grading effects that I use are pretty processing intensive. 
Also, be aware that right now we are previewing this at half resolution. However, we rendered this proxy out at a third resolution. So we're kind of showing pixels that aren't really in the proxy. So you can actually lower this to a third as well to match up with the quality of the proxy. And again, this will speed it up just a little bit more. So this just makes working within your composition a whole lot faster. Obviously, keep in mind that the proxy that we're working with is a lot lower resolution than our original footage, which is kind of the point. However, it also means that if we zoom in here and let's set this to full resolution, you can see that this footage is kind of blurry and pixelated. If we disable the proxy for a second, you can suddenly see all of the detail again. With the proxy enabled, obviously this is pretty low resolution, so don't use your proxy for rotoscoping or detailed masking or even tracking, because once you enable your original footage, it's just not gonna align very well. However, while you're working on the effects for the overall composition, obviously it's going to be much faster working with the proxy enabled. Once you're done with all of the work in Adobe After Effects, you obviously want to disable the proxy again before you render out your final video. If you no longer need the proxy on any of your files, you can actually get rid of this proxy simply by right-clicking on the item in your project panel and saying set proxy to none. This will unlink the proxy from this footage item and you can see the gray square is gone. So this is no longer linked to a proxy. If however, you did this by accident, you can also right click on it, go set proxy and simply select a file that you already have on your hard drive somewhere to be the proxy for this piece of footage. So let's again select our proxy footage and After Effects once again has linked this to be the proxy for this particular item in your project. Finally, let me explain one strange behavior within After Effects that really caught me out when I started to use proxies. Let me quickly remove the existing proxy from this item. And now let's pretend we want to create a new proxy for this piece of footage. As before, we will right click on the footage item and select create proxy movie. Notice that After Effects actually created a new composition and if we dig into this, it just contains the footage item that we want to create the proxy for. Now, I'm not 100% sure why After Effects needs to do this and I've been trying to find the answer online. And if someone out there knows the answer, please leave it down in the comments below. I'm always excited to learn new things. Now, if we go back to the render queue, you will notice that After Effects, as before, has already popped an item into the render queue to render out the proxy. Now, in the earlier example, we actually went into the output module and changed the format of the proxy here. Notice that the post render action in these options is set to set proxy. This is how After Effects knows to assign this item once it's rendered out as a proxy to our original piece of footage. Let's exit the output module and here's the one thing that really tripped me up. Because I do rendering in After Effects so often, I've got some output modules predefined and set up like PNG RGB, QuickTime H264 or QuickTime PNG with an alpha channel. So if I now pick QuickTime H264 and go into the output module, you will notice that the post render action has been set to none because the output module that I predefined didn't define a post render action. So you need to make sure that you change this post render action over to set proxy to tell After Effects, once you're done rendering this item, assign it as a proxy. Let's hit OK and let's make sure we save this in our proxies folder and let's render out this proxy. And done. Now, you may notice that After Effects has actually created a proxy and it's assigned it, but it has not assigned the proxy to the actual footage item that we tried to create the proxy for. Instead, it has assigned the proxy to the new composition that it created. I'm pretty sure this is a bug in After Effects. Fortunately, it's really easy to fix as well. Simply right click the composition and say set proxy to none. Then right click your footage, go to set proxy, file, and then simply locate the proxy that you rendered out and you're good to go. The proxy is now properly assigned to your footage item and hopefully your workflow in Adobe After Effects will be a little bit faster. And that's all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. If you did enjoy this video, I would certainly greatly appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. And if you do want to see more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials, don't forget to go to youtube.com slash surface studio and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.